I have an idea. Let's talk about OSL. OSL, or object source lighting, is a technique used for adding artificial glow to our miniatures. Whether I want that to be a set of glowing eyes, a torch in the darkness, or a flaming skull in our case, that's why I chose this project because after learning the beginning steps it would lead us into one of these techniques which it's nothing you don't know already. The challenge is in the imagination and conceiving the light source. and it, It's a good exercise because it'll get our minds thinking about how the light plays across these volumes and it kind of enhances our uh, abilities for contrast and light sourcing in other areas. But before I get ahead of myself, we're going to zero in on it and I hope you enjoy this video. I'm resisting making flame puns right now, so let's get cooking. To start off, I laid a foundation of white. Uh, this is going to save me some time as I'm laying down the brighter colors. It doesn't need to be a perfect pass, it's just providing a backdrop for the other colors to work off of. You know, brighter colors will work on top of a uh, brighter um, base coat a lot more easily. Next, you want to picture a globe of light around the object, in this case, the head. Um, inside of that are concentric circles graduating in brightness. Um, keep in mind the larger shapes that would block and contain the, the light, like the collar on the model's armor. Um, so next, I want to establish the radius of light and where it will be falling with, with the paint. I'm using very thin down, controllable amounts, always sweeping in the same direction. You can see some of that, that base coat showing through. The, the orange comes off as a very kind of pale, uh, less saturated version of, of what it actually is. And here I've moved along a, a little bit further, increasing that saturation and brightness. Um, you know, it's going to take a little time to get that intensity, but you want it to be very smooth, especially in the case with OSL. And it's kind of the longest step is establishing that larger orange radius. Then everything else takes place inside of that, maybe with the exception of some, some edge highlights. You know, as, as I'm moving up and graduating into brighter and brighter colors, I'm covering less and less of the the area paint job uh, the process gets faster and faster I know these colors are very close to each other in tone but once you have them all laid on the model the uh, the progression looks really nice I just wanted to separate them on the palette so you could see each individual step that I was that I was jumping through of course remember that that hard edges are going to catch the light a lot more intensely than a, than a flat surface so I want to make sure to go and edge highlight those and sometimes I might jump back and forth between uh, the previous color as I'm you know controlling the distance of things it's it's kind of touch and go and sometimes I might lay down a color that I don't think that pass is quite smooth enough so I might have to jump back um, it's it's just paint going back and forth the many thin layers it's just creating more intersections and and gradients as long as the overall progression is there I'm happy with it And yeah, I'm just going to watch myself paint here. I'm <laughs> trying out uh, narrating over this. Um, so I've added this brighter yellow into the mix, and now it's going to start to jump away. That deeper skull is, is going to be more uh, pronounced, and I want to get some of those finer crevices within the flames. Letting, yeah, letting uh, you know gravity do the work for me. It'll seep into every nook and cranny. He's looking nice and bright. Don't forget to pull out those edges. Um, feel free to refer back to the video on edge highlighting and blending to kind of get clued in on the, the approach and precision of these these techniques. Um, you know, I wanted to establish those before we got into something like this. Uh, the, the core of it is, is very similar, to, but it's, it's about uh, controlling that area to produce this um, flaming effect. And once I have this, yes, I'm going back and making sure everything is nice and bright and saturated. I want to remember the rule of threes here, where basically I'm doing everything at least three times before I see a pleasable result. 
especially with OSL, saturation is key. Um, you can you also notice I avoided the color red. It just looks more natural to me. Um, I guess maybe the conversation about what's natural doesn't belong on a genetically modified human figurine, but I guess we all draw our lines somewhere, so I like a more natural flame. There's nothing wrong with using red if that's the way that you like it to look, but um, today I just went for this more of a sooty progression so I can pull those that lick of um, black and orange out of the, the tips of the flame. And here I, you can see him controlling the intensity and the volume as it gets closer and closer to the source. The amount of white added to the yellow is increasing. Pull the final amount of white in there as well. Just give a little taparoo. You know, I really stress the small, small amounts of paint as well. Be a lot more controllable for you. I'm jumping back to the, the orange now, and I want to make sure that each uh, tendril, we'll call it a tendril, each each um, tendril of the flame, each lick of that flame, make sure it's going through orange before it goes up to this black and orange mixture. And again, always always moving in the same direction. I'm not going to sweep the paint uh, back and forth. I'll pick out some areas on the skull as well, pull out the teeth, the cheekbones. I want to blend out that forehead a little bit. I don't think it would look bad if it if it came out rough, if it comes out smooth and nice. I still might go and stipple some kind of uh, charred remains on the on the forehead. We'll see what's uh, visible at the end of this. But once I have the the orange and black mixture laid down. I'll take um, a small amount of gray eventually. <laughs> there we go. I'm mixing up a little bit of gray just on the, the tips of those flames. Again, don't previously cover the last layer, so it's about to turn into smoke. Aside from sculpting actual smoke or gluing dryer sheets, now it's ink time. I don't have orange, but I do have yellow and red, so I'll mix up a very bright orange. It's going to be pretty similar in tone to that first orange uh, base coat. Keep it light. Remember that light is very light. <laughs> you know, you don't want it to be heavy. I'm not trying to dark line this. All I'm trying to do is produce a glaze that's going to just combine the tones as well as add some saturation and some more pigment to this OSL so it just looks very bright and vibrant. So just laying it and all over a kind of candy coating shell. Of course, I can go back and correct some things with paint a little bit later on if it happens to pool up in some crevices on the shoulder. That'll be fine. You know, it's just going to assist it. And I'll move outside of the radius just a little bit. You know, I'm working with a very transparent uh, medium here, so might as well just add to that lead up to that that graduation. And once the ink is dry, I'm going to go back and just reapply my brightest tones. It's all about the subtleties. Just working up gradually, see, as you want the very harsh edges, you can take a quicker jump versus a smooth blend. Lay down a nice uh, hard edge highlight there. And yeah, just kind of throwing it back into those crevices in case anything pulled up in the creases. There's a good example in that that temple got a little bit thick. But we'll keep that secret between just us. No one will ever know that that, that little puddle of um, ink wash was there. You can just paint over it, so have no fear. Try things outside of your comfort zone. It's okay to get a little dangerous. That's how you're going to learn. And there I am just uh, pulling up more of those edges. You know, you, sometimes after examining the, the radius, I'm like, all right, that would definitely be more intense. You know, again, a little touch and go, jumping back and forth. But overall, just moving through a gradient from uh, light to very lightest. Don't think of it as dark. We're doing OSL.
So I hope that uh, helped to inform you. We've got a discard going, so if there's any uh, clarifications to make, talk to me about it. Um, this is my first go at narrating over a video versus just speaking as I'm painting. I do that quite often in my lessons. So I'm pretty used to it, but I wanted to give this, this a try. And originally this video would have been about 26 minutes, so by shaving it down a little bit, hopefully it's more digestible for everybody. Yeah, pulling out the cheekbones again, go back and forth. I like that, that little orange divot going on in the middle of his forehead. So we'll just make it look a little, a little more thin there. But I don't want it to be the same intensity as his eyes. And that's a wrap. I hope you're enjoying this first series of beginner videos. Just wanted to lay down the foundation, kind of create the, uh, the dictionary of these techniques. So if in the future when I'm using them in a video, you, uh, you know, may ask yourself, what is he talking about? You can refer back to these semi-short videos to uh, get, get clued up. But yeah, we've set the foundation and now we can start moving into more advanced techniques. I'm going to use the Legion of the Damned model for uh, a couple more. Um, yeah, I just I have so many ideas, and I'm very thankful for all the support that's that's come in. So we'll just keep going, and I just wanted to pass along my appreciation. So I'll see you next time.